Outlook Online is a really powerful app. If you haven't used it yet, you should give it a try. But today in this video, we're gonna go over five different things that will help you use it more efficiently. And whether you're an Outlook Pro or you're just joining from a new platform, join me on this journey as we learn how to use rules and different customizations to make Outlook more efficient for you. So let's go ahead and begin our journey. Hey guys, so we are Nextech Consultants and our goal is to help your business become more efficient with their technology. So if you do find this video helpful or any other videos that we have, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up. We really do appreciate it as it does help us create more content like this to make your business succeed. Also, we just started our social media platform. So we have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Go ahead and give a follow to those links in the description below. I'd greatly appreciate it. We're super excited to kind of start sharing more tech tips uh, and different photos with you to help your business grow and to uh, curate the technology and the ideas that we have so you don't have to sift through all the data. So let us do that hard work for you. Let us help you and follow our social media. So let's talk about Outlook Online though because that's the main reason we're here. So we have five tips that will help you become an expert. We're gonna go through customizations, creating folders, signatures, automatic replies, and rules. If you're looking for a specific area, the timestamps in the description below, so you can go ahead and scroll down and go to that specific area that we're gonna talk about. But we're gonna go ahead and jump in and we're gonna talk about customizations first. So let's hop on over to the computer. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, guys, we're gonna go to outlook.office.com. This will take you to your inbox. If you haven't signed in, you will have to sign in, so don't forget about that step. But once you're signed in, we're gonna go to the top right here and click on this little gear box. So the first thing we have is our theme. So with the theme you just choose, it changes the top strip up here to make it look different. And it also changes on the left side, which folder is selected. So go ahead and choose your theme. Whichever one you like is the one you get to choose. You'll notice on mine, it might be a little bit different than you. Mine's black for this main area. And I'll show you why in just a second. Which brings me to the next one right here. It's dark mode. So dark mode is the one that makes this black. I personally like it to be darker so it doesn't blind my eyes, but you can turn it off and it makes it white. Um, I like dark mode, so I leave it there. Focused inbox. What Outlook is trying to do is give you a focus inbox and an other inbox. So other is supposed to be more like spam type messages or ones that aren't really important for you. And I don't fully use this feature to the best of its ability. So if you see my email at the top here is from Tuft and Needle, really not something that needs to be shown and focused. But if you actually mark things like not focused or move them to other, um, then what it will do is it will organize it to where when you click other, it'll show your spam messages or the ones that aren't as important as like, say from a client or from somebody that you really need to focus on. So that's what Focus Inbox does. It gives you these two different tabs, focused and other. Desktop notifications, uh, this is exactly what it sounds. If you turn it on, it's gonna ask you in the top left, it'll say, hey, do you want to allow or block uh, desktop notifications from Outlook? If you click allow, um, then it will allow them to go through. I don't have this on because I have Outlook installed on my computer and I don't want that sent um, that way. Also density. So this is where you see the different levels of your inbox. So the all the email list, you're gonna click medium and it's gonna shrink a little bit or compact. Personally, I like full because I like having that space in between. So I don't have to, it makes it easier for me to read each line. And then your conversation view. So this is conversation view means it's grouping emails together that seem like they're from the same person with the same subject. Uh, so do you want the newest messages on top? Do you want the newest messages on bottom or do you want it off? Uh, the new messages in the order it is, sounds exactly what it is. But if you turn it off, it will just take the most recent message and put it right in there. So when you click on a message that has multiple emails in it uh, that people have replied to and not, then it will it will show all of those different messages with either the newest on top or newest messages on bottom. So then you can see the conversation rather than just a single email and then find the other email later. I personally like to have this on. I think it's really helpful to have them all grouped. Um, yeah, so that one's up to you. Also, the reading pane, which this is the area here where you have to select an item and to read it. I'm gonna go and click on my awesome tuft and needle message that I should probably unsubscribe to. But it will show up here and 
give you the uh, show you the message right here. You can either have it on the right, on the bottom, or hide it. So this is the bottom, or you can just hide it all in general and have it like this. Personally, because of the way that I'm used to in Outlook, I like to show it on the right. But choose your preference the way you want it to. So what we're going to move on to next is creating folders. So to create a folder, all you have to do is right click on folders and say create new folder. If you want a shared folder, this is folders that you can share with your organization that all of you can put messages in and all of you will be able to see it. So this is really helpful if you have a big project you're working on and you're all emailing different people about the project. If you put all your messages in a shared folder, then everybody who that folder is shared to can see those messages and work together. I'm just going to click create new folder and I'll pop it down here and I'm going to say test folder. And what you'll see is it created here. We can go ahead and drag and drop items in like tuft and needle. I can just drag it into test folder and have it go in there. And this will really come in handy when we're creating rules. So now that we know how to create a folder, we're actually going to move into the next customization, which is signatures. So let's go ahead and move into that. All right, to create your signature, you're going to click on this gear icon if it's not already showing. And you're gonna go to the very bottom. It's gonna be spot where my camera is covering it, but it says view Outlook, all Outlook settings. Go ahead and click that. And it's gonna come up with this page. Here, you're gonna click on compose and reply. And this is where you can set up your email signature. So for me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say thanks, Josiah, cause that's what I put on the bottom of all my signatures. And I just don't wanna type it anymore. People also typically want a phone number in your signature. So it's easier for them to be able to reach out to you. So you would put that here, however you would like then I don't really put the email in my signature because it's already attached in my email. So the next thing I would put is probably my website. Uh, so www next tech consultants. And then if you press enter on your website, it'll hyperlink it. And if you want, you can add a picture and I would click on insert pictures in line. So then I'm going to choose my logo and I'm going to click open. Obviously this is way too big. So I'm going to drag and drop it just to make it the size that I want. And for me, that's big enough. That's what I want. So this will pop up every time in my signature. A couple important things once you have your signature done, whether you, however you want it to look. But remember, so do you want it to automatically consider the new messages that I can post? You have to check this in order for it to show up when you click new message. If you're replying to somebody or forwarding a message, do you want your signature there also? I typically don't click this because I don't really find it helpful to have my signature 20 times in an email. So I leave this off. So then I'm actually going to scroll down a little bit because the next thing you want to do is check your font. So I'm going to choose Calibri and 12 point font. So when I compose a new message, this is what it's going to look like. What's really important with this though, then is when I come up here, I want to make sure it's the same font. So I'm going to highlight it all. I'm going to click on this font icon right here and I'm going to choose Calibri. And then I'm going to click on the size and make sure it's 12. In this case it was, um, but you want to make sure that those are the same so it doesn't look weird when you're composing your messages. Then you're going to click save. And when you go to create a new message, there's your signature right there. So that's a quick and easy way how to create your signature. You can get into more details in terms of adding tables so you can space and say, okay, I want my name here, but my logo over here. Um, so there is more advanced things, but that's a basic way how to create your signature. And the next thing we're going to move into is automatic replies. So if you want an automatic reply, you're going to do the same thing. Go to the gear icon, go down to view all outlook settings. And what we're going to choose is automatic replies. So let me explain a little bit about automatic replies. You either, obviously you can toggle them on or off, but do you want to choose a time period to send them in? So when I go on vacation, I typically want to choose a date. I want to say, Hey, I don't want to say, I want to send automatic replies during this time. Cause if I forget to turn it off, which is very likely, uh, I want it to automatically turn off. So I'm going to check, I'm going to turn it on and then I can check this box. And let's say I want it to go from one o'clock today till one o'clock tomorrow. You can pick obviously whatever time you want. You can also block out your calendar. So that way people can't request uh, that are in your organization and can see your calendar. will see that you're busy. You can uh, tell that to automatically decline new invitations, which is kind of helpful. And it can also decline and cancel any meetings that you currently have in that time. So these are different options that when you save, it will do these things. So just make sure before you click save. And if you've checked one of these, that this is what you really want, especially this one right here where it says decline and cancel my meetings during this period. So just be careful with that. So now 
This, there's two different automatic replies. The first one is what you wanna say inside your organization. So this is people that have the same email domain as you. So for us, it's anyone with at nextsecondsultants.com. So the reply that I use is something like, I'm out of the office, contact support at support at nextsecondsultants.com. I'll be back on whatever day, thanks. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in real quick. Like, so now that I already have it typed in, what I said is just, I'm out of the office. If it's an urgent need, contact this person. Otherwise I'll be back on this date. I think that's a pretty good out of office response for people. Uh, and I actually want it to be the same as what people outside of my organization get. Uh, if you don't want to send replies to outside your organization it's because mainly your email is for internal use only, or uh, you can uncheck this and it actually won't respond to people outside of your organization. So go ahead and paste that in. And you could also choose if you wanted to send outside your organization, but only to people in your contacts. So that way people that don't really know you don't know that you're gone when they shouldn't really care. Um, so now what you can do is go ahead and click save. And you'll see that automatic replies are currently turned on and that's it. So the next thing we're going to hop on to is rules. So this is the same thing as the others. If you haven't already click on this gear icon in the top, right? And then click on view all outlook settings at the bottom. And we're going to click on rules. All right, so now let's clear our first rule. So I'm going to say high priority. So if something is urgent, I'm going to have, I want people to put like urgent in the subject. Uh, that's a pretty standard thing. So I'm going to say the subject includes urgent. We're going to add an action. What I want it to do is I want it to mark it with importance and I want it to say hi. So if anybody puts urgent, in their subject line, it will automatically mark that email as high. So that's one super easy way of creating a rule. So this next spot, and this is where rule level becomes really important. So stop processing more rules. This is an option you have to say, okay, if I move this to with a high priority importance, then I want it to stop processing rules. So don't go down the list and do any more. I'm actually going to uncheck that and click save. And here's why I clicked on check. I'll show you in just a second. So the next rule I want is I'm going to say, add a new rule and I'm going to say customer. So this would be the name of the customer that I'm working with. So I'm going to select a condition from, so I'm going to select a specific person and I'm actually going to, for the example, I'm going to choose my wife. Uh, and we're going to select an action and we're going to move it to, and we're going to select a folder. So we're actually gonna put in the test folder. And then I want it to stop processing more rules. So what this is going to do is anytime a message has come in, let's say she puts urgent in the subject, it's going to do my first rule, which is mark it as high priority, but it's also going to do my next rule because it doesn't stop. It's going to do my next rule that moves it to test folder. And then it's going to stop processing rules. Actually, once it moves it to the test folder, I don't want it to do anything else. So that's what stop processing rules mean. It means if it hits this rule and it moves it to that folder, don't do anything else. Run rule now means go through my inbox, find anything from this person and move it to that folder. I don't want to do that right now, but I could see this really helpful. If you are actually creating a customer folder and a customer um, emails you, you want it to go to the right folder. So then you would click run rule now and would run it at that point in time. If you don't have it checked, it just means it's going to run it from the time that you save it on. It's not going to backdate that rule. So we're going to go ahead and click save. And what you'll see here is we're going to go move this down because if it hit the customer one first, it does that rule first, it wouldn't do the high priority. I do want it to do high priority and then I want it to move folders. So there's tons of things you can do with rules. Let's pull them up. So select an action. You can move the folder. You can copy it to a place, delete it. Like if it's something you really never want to see again and you know that you can delete it, pin it to the top like urgent. That would be a good one also to pin to the top. You can say, hey, these people, I don't really care about their emails, so I'm going to mark them as red or mark them as junk. Like I did earlier with urgent, you have mark with importance. Categorize means put it in a different category. You could also forward it to, like if you're on vacation and I know that, let's say my CEO emails me, I want it to forward it to my personal because that's a really important message and I want to make sure I get it. Uh, you could forward it as an attachment or you can redirect it. So those are all the different options and that's essentially how you create rules to help your email flow a little bit better and make sure that you're organized with your email rather than just getting all of them in one folder, your inbox and having to go through it all.
As always, guys, I really hope this video helped you out. And if you're still here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You've stuck with me this whole time. I really do appreciate it. I really appreciate you watching and hanging out. I look forward to making more videos like this. So if you hit that subscribe button, allow me to do it. And also don't forget, we now have social media on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you are. Uh, just follow Next Tech NT, and we'll see you guys there for more tech tips and tricks and everything else. So I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys have a good one.